Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord, brothers and sisters. We want to thank God for this time. We give praise and glory to our Father for allowing us to sit, yes, at his feet. Shall we please pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to say thank you so much for the opportunity again to approach you in prayer this afternoon. We open our hearts to you, Spirit of the living God. Please speak to us. We choose to draw close to you this afternoon. And indeed, may your word impact us for your glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, once again, allow me welcome you in the presence of the Lord. I am so honored and humbled to be the preacher this day. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for inviting a friend. We want to thank God for how he has led us since the month began. Brothers and sisters, this month has been set apart as a time for us to focus more on prayer and fasting. I pray and believe that each one of us has spared some time in prayer and fasting, dedicating your life and everything you do to the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to thank the Lord for the ministers who have brought God's word from the beginning of this week. Friends, it has been great. My goodness, I have been touched. I have learned a lot. And indeed, my life hasn't remained the same. So to all who have been around from Monday to today, I believe that the Lord has really, really impacted you and touched you. Yes, the theme this month, this entire week has been the Holy Trinity. And God has used his sons, his sons to bring his word. And today, brothers and sisters, I talk about the will of God in prayer. God's will in prayer, hallelujah. Yes, I have been involved in prayer ministry for a while. I will say that I consider prayer as my number one ministry and I thank the Lord for the grace to pray. I have worked as a Christian for many years. Actually, I gave my life to Jesus when I was a very, very, very young girl. I can't say it's been a very smooth road. There have been challenges, but by the grace of God, I am still standing. And when I was really a young girl, I think in primary, that's when uh, by the grace of God, I discovered the call for um, prayer ministry and intercessory ministry. And I will say that it has, it's, it's been by the grace of God. And I believe in prayer. I don't know if there is someone out there I believe in prayer. Why? Because in prayer, we talk to our Father. So the creator of the universe, our Father, is always indeed the audience, as our speaker made it very clear to us yesterday. But allow me to say, allow me to confess that although I have been in the prayer ministry, sisters and brothers, I have made a number of mistakes in prayer. Yes. And for that reason, every day I ask the Lord to teach me how to pray. And as I speak to you, I believe that you who is listening to me, you have as well made a number of mistakes in prayer. So you and me, all of us need to continuously learn and grow in the way we can approach our Father in prayer. For that reason, indeed we have focused on that throughout this month and this week. I want to pose a question to all of us, dear brothers and sisters who are listening. Have you ever prayed and fasted with everything that is in you, fasting for something to happen? I would say with so much faith, but yet at the end, you received no answer. Has that ever happened to you? And actually, when you received no answer, many accused you for lack of faith. Has it happened to you? I am not with you, but I believe that this has been an experience for a number of us, many of us, 
We have experienced moments when we have prayed, fasted, exercised our faith, but still have not received the answers to that particular prayer of God. So today, my sisters and brothers, as we talk about God's will, what does it mean to pray according to God's will? We are going to study a number of scriptures, and I know that indeed God will speak to you and God will speak to me. You and me, many of us, brothers and sisters, have known prayer to be a time to present our requests to God. Many of us have approached prayer with the attitude of ask, going before God to ask. As a matter of fact, in our mother tongue, the word prayer is okusawa. So we approach prayer with that wanting to receive or asking. And very often we have reduced prayer to what we want, or we have reduced prayer to our will. We simply go in and say, God, do this for me. Or wanting to get God to do our will. Brothers and sisters, just take a minute and reflect upon your prayer life. Think about the prayers you have offered. Evaluate your prayer life. How have you been approaching God? Brothers and sisters, yes, we have all been selfish in one way or another. And for that reason, I believe God is speaking to us this day. Actually, sometimes in our prayers, it's as though we are commanding God. Or it's as though we are saying, God, do this or else. Or sometimes we go ahead and claim this, claim that, generally as though we are commanding God. But friends, that is not prayer. And that's not how we ought to pray. I am not saying that raising our voices or being passionate is commanding God. But we know those moments when we have been misled. Praise the name of God. Yes, we need to acknowledge that although we have needs and desires, very often our needs and desires dominate our prayer life. And yet, as a matter of fact, very often our needs or our will is not in sync with the will of God. Our will, our desires, very often, they are not in sync with the will of God. So brothers and sisters, in prayer, we are to come before our triune God and engage in a conversation. Again, as our preacher made it clear yesterday, I will emphasize it again, brothers and sisters, that prayer is a conversation. That's how I approach prayer. I would say that prayer is that humbling moment when you and me, the sinners, are allowed to engage in a conversation with the triune God or to engage in a Trinitarian conversation. Yes, on Monday, the preacher emphasized and taught us the doctrine of Trinity in prayer. And I will emphasize again this day, my sisters and brothers, that the Trinity is inseparable. Trinity is inseparable. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three persons, but one in substance. Hallelujah. We worship one true God. Allow me to say, my sisters and brothers, that the incarnation of God God becoming man, for me, I have considered, and I still consider that as the most humbling moment when God himself agreed to come in flesh. Brothers and sisters, in Jesus on earth, humanity interacted with God. My brothers, Prayer and sisters, prayer is an opportunity to engage in the conversation. And this conversation is only possible through the Son. Yes, it is only possible through the Son. 
So the question that might be going through your mind, so those who don't pray through Jesus, do they pray to our God? Allow me to say that as for me, Lydia, anyone who does not pray through Jesus Christ or pray through Buddha, pray through prophet so-and-so does not pray to our God, the Father. Because we only approach the Father through the Son. Prayer gives us an opportunity to come before God and ask, what do you want us to do? What do you want us to do? Allow me to say, I know we all know this, that you and me, we are on earth to the, for the glory of God. So in prayer, we are meant to ask God what he wants us to do so that he will receive the glory. For that reason, Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew chapter 6. I will just quote 9 and 10, verses 9 and 10. Jesus made it very, very clear to his disciples and said, when you pray, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, hallelujah. Wow, Jesus made it very clear that when you come to, in prayer, you should come knowing that you're coming to your father who is in heaven. So brothers and sisters, allow me to say that when we come to God in prayer, we approach God, the Father, in a privileged relationship. Hallelujah. A relationship of father, son, a relationship of father, daughter, a relationship of father and the child. Friends, that truth was very unusual to the Jews because to them, calling God father uh -uh, uh -uh, was not right. It was too intimate. So to the many Jews, it didn't go well. But our Lord Jesus Christ made it clear that when we come to the Lord, when we come in prayer, we should come knowing that we come to Abba Father. That is very clear. And he also made it very clear that when we come to our Father, that triune God, hallelujah, before you do anything else, Come on, exalt him as we learned last week. Adore him as we learned last week. But Jesus also made it very clear that you request that let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth. And that's where our theme comes from. Prayer, my sisters and brothers, is an opportunity to ask for the will of God. Humanly speaking, brothers and sisters, everyone wants to promote, everyone wants to protect and guard his or her will. Jesus is instructing us today that when we approach the Father in prayer, we ought to ask for his will. Jesus made it very clear that we are called to ask for God's desire. Knowing how heaven operates, Jesus makes it very clear, even to us today. Allow me to say that unlike on earth, in heaven, brothers and sisters, there is no disobedience, no resistance to God's will. Unlike on earth, but in heaven, mm -mm, no disobedience to the will of God. Therefore, all kingdom people, all children of God are called to pray and desire to see the will of the king done on earth. In our prayer, brothers and sisters, we are supposed to pray and desire to see the desires, the will of the king be so on earth as it is in heaven. So when we talk about the will of God, praying within the will of God, praying according to the will of God. Some of us may be wondering, but why? Why does God ask us to pray his will? He's God. He can do anything he wants. Yes, brothers and sisters, God is more than able to do his will 
without our prayer or cooperation. But yet, listen to this, he is able, but yet he invites us to participate, hallelujah, in the heavenly conversation, to participate in his will. He desires that you and me will participate in God's will so that his will will be done on earth. So when we invite the will of God, brothers and sisters, we are saying, God, let your desires be on earth. God, let your expectations be on earth. God, let your mind take over our expectations, take over our desires, take over our mind and our will. So when we ask for God's will, we are saying, God, let there be a switch that your will will take over. I want to let us know, brothers and sisters, that the will of God is not something very hidden away from us. The will of God is available, actually, and available to anyone who desires to know the will of God. Romans chapter 12, I will not read the whole of it, but verse 1 to 2, brothers and sisters, it is very, very clear. Paul writes to the Christians in Rome, and he says to them, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. And verse 2 says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. My sisters and brothers, the will of God is meant to be discovered and it's available. The will of God is good, is pleasing, and is perfect. Hallelujah. We are going to discover how can we discover the will of God. Romans makes it very, very clear that you can know the will of God. Praise be to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, there is the general revealed will of God. There is the general revealed will of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is what the general revealed will of God is what God has made known to his people. It is through scripture, brothers and sisters, that the will of God is revealed. I will say, brothers and sisters, according to scripture, the will of God is that his kingdom come on earth. The will of God as well is that men will be saved. Hallelujah. The will of God is that you and me will love God and love one another. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, again, I will say the revealed will of God, the general revealed will of God, brothers and sisters, is that indeed we may stop sinning. Very often when Jesus healed or when Jesus prayed for men on earth, he made it very clear to them and said, go and stop sinning. The general revealed will of God is that we may stop sinning, that we may be forgiven, that we may forgive, hallelujah. And as well, it is God's desire that we get the best needs. Brothers and sisters, allow me to say yes, in addition to the general revealed will of God, there is the specific will of God. Yes, specifically to an individual concerning a particular situation, concerning your life, or a will of God concerning a nation, the will of God, a specific will of God. We see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 1, Paul makes it very clear, yes, that he is chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Do you know the will of God for your life? Allow me to run through very fast why you and me should pray 
through the will of God. Oh, according to the will of God. Number one, when we pray in the will of God or call upon God's will on earth, number one, we are demonstrating our total trust and dependence on God. It is a demonstration, brothers and sisters, that we are willing to know the mind of God and do according to the mind of God. When we say, let your will come, or when we allow the will of God to take over, we are actually saying, God, we want your plan because you rule and you know what is best. That's what we mean. And this reminds me of King Jehoshaphat. I will not read, but you read it on your own time. King Jehoshaphat in 1 Kings 22. When Hahab, King Hahab had asked him to escort him, Jehoshaphat asked him, have you sold, have you inquired of the Lord? Is there no prophet for you and me to inquire of the Lord? We as well see David on a number of occasions in 1 Samuel chapter 23, David inquiring of the Lord. To the men who are listening to me, listen to this one. We see in Genesis 25, verse 20 to 22, Isaac inquiring of the Lord concerning Rebekah because Rebekah was barren. So I want to ask the brothers, if you're struggling in your house, if your wife is yet, you know, she hasn't yet conceived, or if there is a challenge in your home, have you inquired of the Lord? If there is a child who has become very un unruly, have you inquired of the Lord? Before we complain, brothers and sisters, may we learn to inquire of the Lord. Number two, as we talk about the will of God, when we ask for the will of God, number two, we are also saying that there is always a battle between man's will and God's will. Brothers and sisters, you and me are free and have the ability to make any choice. God has given that to us. But although we are free to make any choice, as Christians, we are meant to be guided by the Lord. Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, in Matthew 26, the reading that we took, Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, we see him fully man expressing and making it very clear to his father about his will. Jesus willed and desired that the cup be taken away from him. Scripture tells us three times he pleaded with God. Brothers and sisters, Jesus was fully man. And yet we see, although Jesus desired and willed that the cup be taken away, he opened up his heart. But despite the deep anguish, despite the pain, despite the heaviness, despite the bloody sweat, despite the sweating, despite everything that he was experiencing as a human being, he did not disobey the will of the father. Instead, he cried heavily, bowed down his head and said, not my will, but your will. What does that teach us? Brothers and sisters, that teaches us that you and me can come before the Lord and speak clearly, openly how you feel. But after you've made your submission, <laughs> you come and say the Lord, not my will, but your will be taken away. Allow me to say that it was in the garden of Gethsemane when the battle was won. And how? When Jesus made that decision to say yes to the will of the Father. Battles are won in the place of prayer. Battles are won when we accept the will of the Lord. Picture with me two gardens, my sisters and brothers, the garden of Eden and the garden of Gethsemane. In both gardens, yes, there were men. One man in the garden of Eden, another man in the garden of, e on the garden of Gethsemane. But we see the man in the garden of Eden said, not your will, but my will. 
And the man in the garden of Gethsemane said, not my will, but your will. We see the results. What happened in the garden of Eden brought sin and death to the world. But what happened in the garden of Gethsemane when a decision was made? We see salvation and eternal life coming. My sisters and brothers, when we say yes to the will of God, salvation comes, deliverance comes, healing comes, restoration comes. Come on, name it. No wonder the Bible tells us, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those other things will be added. My sisters and brothers, what do you seek? Seek the will of God. May we learn to seek the will of God. Brothers and sisters, when we say your will be done, this is a heart rendering plea to God to align our will with his good, pleasing and perfect will. When we say yes to the will of God, our will is aligned with the will of God and the right decision is made. Allow me to move very fast. There's so much that the Lord was revealing to me as I prayed in relation to this sharing and as I studied. But number three, even as we, what it means to pray for of God. When we say, let your will be done, we are saying to the Lord, we are submissive and ready to obey you. Hallelujah. This means that we are offering ourselves to the Lord and say, God, may we be your instruments submitting to him and saying, use us. As we submit each day to the will of God, sisters and brothers, we are fashioned to Christ's likeness, hallelujah. We become more like Christ. Daily submission to the will of God leads to the crucifixion of the flesh. We crucify the flesh each day. And the result is that we become more and more like Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So allow the of God. Yes, as the first preacher said on Monday, the will of God brings transformation. Indeed, it brings transformation to us and to the people around us and the entire world. When Mary, mother of Jesus, accepted the will of God, what happened? He was, she was transformed, but the entire world didn't remain the same. May we learn to say yes to the will of God. And the fourth point, brothers and sisters, when we allow the will of God, or when we say, let your will be, we are saying that we want to offer effective prayers. Because when we ask anything to God the Father, according to his will, scripture tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 to 15, that God hears and responds to our prayers. My brothers, allow me to tell you and sisters that prayers are sent to only oh, Allow me to say that answers are sent to prayers offered according to the will of God. May God teach us how to pray according to his will. Very, very fast because our time is fast spent. How can we pray according to the will of God? Number one, my sisters and brothers, bringing what our preacher spoke to us yesterday about the Holy Spirit in prayer. The centrality of the Holy Spirit cannot be overemphasized, brothers and sisters. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't pray. The Holy Spirit helps us. The Holy Spirit prays within us with groanings that words cannot utter. Brothers and sisters, sometimes in prayer, we might even not have any word. Sometimes in prayer, we shall groan. I have been in prayer ministry for a while, as I did, said at the beginning. But there are times I have groaned in prayer for about four or five hours. And you wonder where the words come from. You wonder how you're doing it, but the Holy Spirit groans within you. The Holy Spirit prays within us. So without the Holy Spirit, we cannot pray. Believers, that's why Jesus told his disciples to wait for the gift. And when they received the Holy Spirit, they were able to do everything. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 
10 to 12. He searches the deep things of God and he makes them known to us. Imagine when we pray we are before the triune God, we are before Abba Father, we are before God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But as we are before him, his spirit, himself, he is again saying, come on, we pray like this. Come on, we do it like this. Come on, talk to father like this. Come on. Wow, what a loving and caring father. Brothers and sisters, God is calling us to submit to his spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't know the will of God. Yes, according for us to know the will of God, number two, Romans 12 clear or makes it very clear to us that when we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, when we allow the mind to be renewed, we experience transformation. And brothers and sisters, we know the will of God. So the will of God is in his word. When we yield to his word, friends, we know the will of God. As I conclude, sisters and brothers, Prayer is an opportunity to align my will, your will, with the will of God. And our prayer, sisters and brothers, our top priority in prayer should be God's agenda and God's will. In prayer, we submit, to, we submit our will completely to God's will. We submit to God. The focus is about God's will. It is not about my will. It's not about I. We live in a generation when it's all about me, 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 me. But we need to die each day as we surrender to the will of God. Jesus made it very, very clear to his disciples. Knowing their relationship, he says, now ask for his will. Ask for his will. Wow. And that's what God is saying. Ask for my will. Let my will be. Praise the name of the Lord. Friends, it is imperative for every Christian to invite the will of God through prayer. When we do that, we are going to hate what God hates. When we do that, we are going to die to sin. When we do that, we are going to die to every wickedness in our community. When we allow the will of God, brothers and sisters, we are going to love what God loves. Prayer is such an opportunity. Before our Father, guided by Jesus, our brother, hallelujah helped by the Holy Spirit and through Jesus himself, but more so praying to the triune God, who is God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God bless you. Shall we pray together? Hallelujah. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, submitting our desires and will to you. To you. We lay them aside. Please reveal your will and let your will as it is in heaven be so in our lives. Lord, regardless of how we feel and what we want, let your will be in our lives. Help us be sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Help us submit and be obedient to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. As Jesus prayed, this afternoon we pray, not our will, not my will, but your will be done in us and through us. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you.